Hi, I'd like to give you a presentation on what the UK Global Talent Visa in Digital Technologies is, and it is your route to settlement. So basically, it is a Global Talent Visa specifically for people working in the tech sector. So this webinar presentation is going to consist about what, who I am, uh, a little bit about myself, what is the Global Talent Visa, the stage one endorsement application and process. I'll give you some of the uh, guidelines and some of my top tips since I've been doing this for the last seven years now since I received my Global Talent Visa. My name is Michelle Hewer. I am Vietnamese, Australian, and now British citizen. I am a UK Global Talent Visa coach. In 2016, I became a recipient for the UK Global Talent Visa. I was endorsed with exceptional talent in digital technology, and I am a former Tech Nation Visa ambassador. What that meant is that um, I became an ambassador for the um, Glo Global Talent Visa scheme, uh, specifically in the digital technology sector. Um, and I was able to share my story about how I got my UK Global Talent Visa and how I shared my story as well and how you can get it. Um, in 2019, three years after I got my uh, visa, I was able to apply for an indefinite leave to remain, which is like a permanent residency. And then a year later, I could apply for British citizen. Um, so I am a British citizenship. Um, well, I do have my British citizenship now um, as a result of getting this UK Global Talent Visa. Now, I spent seven years in the UK. Um, I based myself in Manchester and Newcastle, and I traveled a lot down to London. I was building my startup, uh, really enjoyed working in the tech um, sector in the UK. It's so vibrant. Um, everyone is so friendly, but what you get out of it is what you put in. So I put in a lot of effort, uh, networking, being involved in all in my community and sharing my um, insights, uh, sharing my expertise and knowledge uh, to the uh, tech sector. Um, before I became a tech entrepreneur, I was a, an Australian solicitor. I was working in Australia. I was a property commercial law solicitor um, and moved to the UK, but then got bitten by the uh, tech entrepreneurship bug and started my own startup. Um, when I got my uh, visa, um, I wrote a blog about my journey and that was back in 2016 and it went viral. And that's how I started to help um, so many people, became the ambassador. And then um, now I help people all over the world with um, the stage one endorsement process, which I'll go through. Um, I help you know tech entrepreneurs, senior execs, tech employees. I help founders, um, CTOs. I help so many different people. Um, over the years, my success rate has um, increased. It's at 90% now. Not everyone who applies gets endorsed. So with me, um, I give you the best chance um, because I put forward a very strong application for you. Um, I know because I've been through the process and I've helped so many other people as well. Um, the average endorsement time is about um, up to eight weeks. So um, it, they don't take that long. It's usually around the three to four week mark, but some of my clients um, have received their result uh, within three to 27 hours. So um, it really depends um, when you submit, but um, because I put forward a strong application with my clients, um, they get a result quite quickly. Um, some of my clients over the years have included people from all over. As I said, um, I've got clients from WhatsApp, Sony, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, Zoom, Oracle, startups, CTO, CEOs. The list is really long. Um, everyone is different. Everyone has a different story to tell. And this is why I love doing what I do. Um, just a quick disclaimer, I only help with stage one endorsement. I'm not affiliated with the Home Office or Tech Nation. Um, I used to be the ambassador for Tech Nation, but I'm no longer the ambassador. But um, I'm just the, the UK Global Talent Visa coach helping people with their stage one endorsements. So um, when I started my startup and, and building it up, I was featured in a lot of 
publications. I was, you know, as I said, I was out there um, providing my insights, being really involved in my uh, tech community. And this is something that the assessors would like to see you do as well. If you don't have it now, that's okay. You know that that's what they want and what you need. And it's, it's all good for your own personal development as well in your career. I've been featured in TechCrunch, Business Leader. Um, I was a judge at a hackathon. I've been interviewed. I've been featured. I've been quoted in books and I was featured in the Sunday Times as well. So it's those types of things. They want you um, to show your thought leadership and industry uh, to be an industry leader in your field. And as I said, it all started with one blog. It's on my website about my journey on how I received the UK Global Talent Visa. So some of my successful clients are here. They're not all there. Um, some of them don't want to share their story, which is absolutely fine. But these are the ones that have. They're on my YouTube. They're on my blog. Um, and you can have a look at them. You can see they're from all over the world. I get um, people from Nigeria, India, US, uh, Mexico, China, Pakistan, um, Ukraine, um, Af Africa, all, all over the world, South Africa. So um, I hope that I can help you too. So what is the UK Global Talent Visa? It was called the Exceptional Talent Visa, and that's what I got, but they did a rebrand. It's exactly the same thing. It's a special visa that was introduced to allow highly skilled tech entrepreneurs and talent um, in, the, in the digital technology sector the ability to apply for the right to live and work in the UK for up to five years. It's a two-stage process. So the first stage is the endorsement stage and the second stage is the visa stage. And you can't get to the visa stage until you've been endorsed. Um, and the endorsement body is Tech Nation. It's a government body. They have set some strict criteria um, for you to meet before they will endorse you with exceptional talent or exceptional promise. And then, um, then you once you get that, then you can apply for the visa. And I only help with the endorsement process. Um, when you look at the criteria, which I'll go through later, um, it looks like a job application, but it's more than a job application. And if you Google hashtag Tech Nation Visa, this is the global talent visa in digital technologies. Um, there are other global talent visas in for different sectors. So the fashion, arts, science and engineering. Um, there's um, uh, there's lots of other um, um, sectors that fall under the global talent visa umbrella. But what this video is about is only for the digital technology sector. The benefits of the UK Global Talent Visa in digital tech and in all of them is that you get the freedom and flexibility to live and work in the UK for up to five years. You can also apply for that indefinitely to remain or permanent residency and then go on to get your citizenship as well if you apply for it. You can also bring your family, your dependents with you. Um, they will go under your visa and, and they can also apply for citizenship as well. Um, you can register a UK limited company because some, under some visas you can't, but this one you can. You can also work for a tech company without the need for a company to sponsor you. And this is the great thing about the global talent visa because it's attached to you. Um, if you don't like the job that you're in, you can move jobs and you can apply for another job and it doesn't matter if the company can or can't sponsor you because you've got your own visa. It is cost effective in terms of the application fee for the endorsement. Um, it's in the hundreds, but once, once you get past that, then you go to the visa stage and that's where it gets a little bit more expensive. But the first stage is, is in the hundreds. It's not that much. So just a few stats here, there's loads of, you know, there's 90 plus um, countries that people are applying from, but the majority US, India, Nigeria, Canada and Russia, um, there's a 54% endorsement rate. So as I said, not everyone who applies gets it. My success rate is 90%. Um, but, you know, you can appeal and you can apply more than once. So if you've rejected the first time, you get feedback and you can you can reapply because, you know, sometimes your evidence isn't enough for them to endorse you. And that's what I help with. Um, over the years, there have been more than, you know, 3000 successful recipients. There's unlimited endorsement. So when I applied, there was a cap of 200 per year. But now it's anyone who applies. And if they meet the criteria, they will get endorsed. There's no cap or anything. Um, you can apply for talent or promise. So talent is people who are um, 
more than five years in their career and promise is people with less than five years in their um, tech career and there's a 68 32 split there it's just stats um there's a 75 25 split for male female applicants obviously um the uk tech sector is quite male dominated so obviously that's why there's male female but um i help a lot of um, females um, with their applications as well um, once you are endorsed and you get the visa, you can join the Global Talent Visa um, in Digital Technologies alumni. So you'll meet other people who have received the visa and there's meetups and there's events and things um, happening around in London. So if you um, do move to London or if you're already in London, there's another, there's a little networking group here for you to join. So over the years, there have been loads of applications Um you can see it's increased um, steadily over the years. This one um, I've not updated, but it, it this one is now in the sort of 800s. Um, so there's been 800 applications so far this year. But as you can see, um, over the years, they've increased um, quite a bit. So more people know about it, more people will apply. So this is what um, I'm here to do is just tell more people about this, this route um, to settlement uh, in the UK. So um, there's a Tech Nation visa report that was in 2020. This has been, there's been a couple of reports um, since then, but this one I feel has, has the best stats really, um, especially by country. You can see there, there's different um, countries um, and endorsement rates. So um, fortunately, Nigeria has the lowest at 30%. Remember I said there's a 54% success rate or endorsement rate. People generally from Nigeria have a 30%. Um, quite interestingly, um, my main clientele are people from Nigeria and my success rate is 90%. Um, it's just, you know, these are just the stats. It's it don't be put off by it. It's just that's the stats that they've seen, but it's really about your evidence and whether or not you're eligible and how you can meet the criteria. Um, and then once you do hit that, then you will be endorsed. Um, these are the um, skills that people are um, applying for and getting endorsed. So obviously, because it's a tech visa, people's software engineering skills are more likely to get endorsed. But again, it depends on your evidence. Um, and people with business skills also um, get endorsed as well. So it's not purely a tech um, you don't purely have to have a technical role to get this Tech Nation visa or Global Talent Visa in digital tech. Um, they understand that people who have a technical skill, yes, they can apply, but equally people who have a business skill who work for um, a, a tech company can also apply and are, are getting endorsed as well. So the process, again, as I mentioned, there's two stages. The first stage is the endorsement stage. So you've got to get endorsed first by meeting the criteria. And once you meet the criteria, then you can apply for the visa. But within the first stage, there's two steps. The first step is you have to pay and register online at the home office. So that's where you pay your fee. And the fee is £456 for the stage one endorsement. Once you've paid your fee, then you've got 15 working days to then upload your documents onto the Tech Nation portal. Um, and that's where you submit your application. So, so that's two steps. When I applied, we had to send it by post. Um, but now they've gone quite technical and you can do it online from any country you want. You don't have to be in the UK to do this. It's all online. Then they take up to eight weeks to supply you with a decision on whether or not you've been endorsed with exceptional talent or promise. As I said, it could take up to eight weeks. Generally, it's around three to four weeks to give you that decision. They tell you if you are successful or unsuccessful. If you are unsuccessful, you can appeal the decision. And I help with appeals as well. So maybe your evidence wasn't right. Maybe they made a mistake. Maybe you didn't, you know, convince the assessor that you met the criteria. They will tell you. And it's up to you. If you feel like they made a mistake, you can appeal. You've got 28 calendar days to appeal. They've got 28 calendar days to respond to you. And if they, it goes to another assessor to look at your application again. And if they say, well, we agree with the original assessor and you are sorry, you're unsuccessful, then that's the decision. Otherwise, it can actually be overturned and you can be successful. 
If you are successful, you go to stage two, and that's the home office visa application stage. And this is where you pay your bigger fee. The fee is £152. Um, there's the biometrics and then the immigration health surcharge, and that's in the thousands because you have to pay for that upfront. Um, I believe at the moment it is £624 for the immigration health surcharge fee per year. And if you are on a five year, if you want to stay in the UK for five years, that's £624 times five years. So it's about £3,000. And that's only for one applicant. That's for the, the main applicant. And then if you have dependents, obviously, it's it's more. Um, and then you they make the decision within three to eight weeks if you have um, um if you're accepted for the actual visa um so that's that that's the process there so um going now to the guidelines and the and the eligibility um as i said you can have a technical or business skill to apply um so long as you meet you hit some of these skills if it's not just look at what's most um uh what 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 looks like your skill um it's not exhaustive this list because they understand that um the um, roles and skills do change quite quickly. Um, so there you have it there. They, they do have some specialisms that aren't suitable. So just be wary. Anyone who works as a consultant outsources, they're not eligible. So there's a new definition um, that was provided. So you must be working for a product-led digital technology company. Um, this is defined as a business that provides a proprietary digital technical service product platform hardware as their primary revenue source. So basically, if you are a founder or employee of a digital tech company that develops its own products, okay, for its customers and then to sell to its customers, that you can't you can't be working for a company that develops products for companies customers and they then sell that on um wrap it up and make it their own so that that's like outsourcing and consultancy so just be mindful that you your company has to do the, the product development and this is about product development um, and that's what a product-led digital technology company means 15 documents that you need to provide. They consist of a CV, personal statement, and three letters of recommendations by experts. Then um, you've got 10 documents and you need to fulfill that 10 documents by meeting the mandatory or and optional criteria. And it's a three page limit for each document, okay? So everyone has to do CV, personal statement, and three letters of recommendation by experts, but the 10 documents for the mandatory optional criteria you choose, and I'll go through that now. So you can apply for exceptional talent or promise. Um, and that means if you've got more than five years, you're a talent. If you've got less than five years, you've got promise. Um, the difference is if you get talent within three years, you can apply for your indefinite leave to remain and then British citizenship. But then for promise, it's within five years, you can apply for indefinite leave to remain and then citizenship. You have to provide evidence that you are a leader in your field. This is very important. It's mandatory now. So you need three examples of that. Then you've got four options here and you only need to select two options and put three pieces of evidence against the options that you choose. You have to show proven track record of innovation, any volunteer work that advances the tech sector, any commercial technical entrepreneurial impact or academic contributions. So it's really important to really spell out the, which options you're choosing and put lots of evidence against each of those options. You've got 10 documents. So it's three, three and three, which is nine examples um, per criteria. And that means nine, but the 10th document just make, um, just pick the, one of the criteria that you've already selected and put the fourth document against that criteria. So I've got loads of common questions when I help clients. Um, it's understandable that not everyone is confident when they start looking at this process, but don't worry, the more you talk to me, the more you do your research, you can hopefully be more confident and I can help you through that process. I help people decide, are they eligible? How do you present your documents? What's relevant information? Because you've got so much information, you don't know what's relevant, what's not. Who can be your experts? Because we go through um, your experts profile. How do you show your innovations and impact? How do you show that you're an exceptional leader? How much experience do you need? And if you are unsuccessful, what happens? Can I appeal? So I help everyone with all those questions um, just 
uh, contact me and I can certainly help you. Um, I do have a, an eligibility questionnaire. Um, I vet people first of all, so fill in the questionnaire. And if you are eligible, I will invite you for a, dis a free discovery call, 15 minutes. Um, so if you aren't eligible, unfortunately, you, there is no need to have a discovery call. I I can tell when you answer your questions and I look at your LinkedIn profile. So make sure you complete it properly and with as much information as possible so I can uh, determine whether or not you're eligible. Some of my top tips, I've been through the process and I've also helped people through the process. So start early, budget, time, plan, implement, submit and appeal. That Those are the things that we need to consider when you look at you know, preparing. You cannot submit within a week. Like it's not possible because of, there's so much evidence and you've got to give yourself time to, to do everything. Look at ways to add value to the tech sector as well. You can do some volunteer work and be active. As I said, whatever you get out of the tech, tech sector is what you put in. Your tech network is very important in this process as well. Um, you have to rely on people within your network to vouch for you and confirm what you've done in the tech sector because the assessors aren't only assessing you, they're assessing your experts as well. This process is about self-development. You will see that you will see um, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are and how you can highlight your strengths. And think about your thought leadership. Um, it's not just about you working in your company and showing leadership within your company. It's about thought leadership within the industry. How, why are you exceptionally talented? Um, why should the assessor um, endorse you as an exceptional talent or promise? Not, it's not a job application. It's, it's how do you add value to the tech sector as well as to your own company that you work for? And here, you know, you have to prepare to put in the hard work. The bigger the reward, which is citizenship, the bigger investment required by you, either by time, money, effort, everything. Um, it took me three months to do my application and I did it the first time around and I got in um, and it was hard. And everyone who's got in will tell you the same thing. It's really hard, but you have to prepare for it. You have to put in the hard work and hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll get it. More videos, watch my YouTube channel. I've got loads of YouTube channels as well. Uh, YouTube videos on my YouTube channel and my website. You can always um, find me at www.michellehewer.co.uk and you'll find loads and loads um, of information there. So thank you very much for uh, listening and hopefully I will hear from you soon. If not, um, have a great day. Bye.